Today, the story of Mubarak's Hajj, reported by our correspondent, Anissa Mehdi, herself, just back from Saudi Arabia. Anissa, welcome. It's good to be here. It was an inspiring trip, and I'm glad to be back, as is Abdulali Mubarak, back home now with his family in Maplewood. He had a three-week sojourn to Saudi Arabia, and as you'll see in a moment, his Hajj was full of ups and downs. I was there for 10 days following him on his pilgrimage, a journey that was both exhilarating and arduous. The pilgrimage begins in Mecca, millions circling the Kaaba seven times. From afar, or on TV, it looks like a galaxy seen through a telescope. For Muslim Abdul Alim Mubarak of New Jersey, shoulder to shoulder with hundreds of thousands of pilgrims, breathing room was at a premium. This was six grueling hours. And I was out in the blazing sun. I mean, I had no cover on my head. I was out in the blazing sun. I was dripping, soaking wet with sweat. You wouldn't do this for no other man. You only do this for Allah, you know? And so you go through this process because you know that you're doing it for Allah, and Allah will, 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 will reward you for it. The ultimate goal of the Hajj is a valley called Arafat, a few miles to the west. En route, pilgrims spend the night at this city of tents called Mina preparing for a one-on-one -on -one with God. When we go to Arafat, where it has been reported that where Adam and Eve met, we go back to our origins. We go back to our spiritual origins, and we go back to our human origins. Arafat is the heart of Hajj. Muslims believe that here, God accepts all prayers and will forgive a person's sins for the rest of his life. Did you experience a nearness of God? Yeah, I did. When I was making my supplications, the idea that my sins have all been forgiven and I'm feeling fresh and renewed as a new person, it's an incredible contemplation. From Arafat, the millions moved to Muzdalifa, a place to gather pebbles the size of lentils. These will be thrown at stone pillars that symbolize Satan. According to the Quran, Satan taunted Abraham telling him to ignore God's commandment to sacrifice his son. Abraham drove Satan away with stones. Muslims reenact Abraham's faithfulness, throwing stones, symbolically, at the many Satans who bedevil their daily lives and threaten society. It was at the Jumarat, the place of stoning, that pilgrims died this year in a crush to complete the rituals on the last day of Hajj. Religious fervor created a rush. These people aren't there to hurt you. you know, it's not like you're trying to find a seat on the subway in New York. Their passion, their zeal is to worship God. Back in Mecca, the transformative power of his spiritual journey has begun to stir in Mubarak. I will pray to Allah for forgiveness. I'll pray to Allah for guidance. I'll pray to Allah for health. I'll pray to Allah for wealth. I'll pray to Allah to increase my faith. Anissa, that's fascinating. The the Kaaba that the, you all walked around. Yes. Yeah. What is that? It's a stone structure, about 40 feet uh, long, 50 feet high, covered in a beautifully woven black cloth with inscriptions of the Quran. And according to the Quran, the foundations of this building were raised by Abraham, the prophet Abraham, and his son Ishmael. It's a little ambiguous about whether there might have been something there prior to this particular building of it. But it's holy. It, was it is holy because it was the first house of worship for the one God. We see in the pictures mostly men. What was it like there to be a woman? Well, there, were, woman. there were lots of women there. I mean, there were as many Muslim women as there are men, so I was not alone by any stretch of the imagination, but I was perfectly welcome, perfectly safe. I felt uh, respected. And the harem... The, the great mosque in Mecca is the only place in the Muslim world where men and women are allowed to pray side by side. And did you yourself uh, throw pebbles at the devil? I did. I collected some pebbles at Muzdalifa, and I, I threw them at the devil. We all have devils, and I did enjoy tossing them and saying, take that, and I'm stronger <laughs> than you. I'll beat you back. I know it was hot. I know it was crowded. And what was it like spiritually? Well... I've never before prayed with two to three million people 
all together in unison. And there's a great deal of power in that. And I believe Abdul Ali Mubarak experienced that too. And we're going to have a follow-up report in a few weeks where he can talk about the transformation this has had in his life. We'll hear from his family too. Lisa, many thanks. Welcome home.